how are you booktube my name is maria and welcome to my channel mh books and welcome to a very rainy morning it's about 20 past 8 in the morning friday morning in dublin and it is raining and we have a building site across the road for those anybody who's new or hasn't caught Friday reads before or within the last month or so this is going to just be continuous at the moment they're getting deliveries they start at seven o'clock um it's a rather large site and we have our budgies in the background as per normal um and today for once it's actually little willow who's speaking um so she's having a great time <laughs> And last week, I didn't start off with, I said I would always start with, what was I enjoying reading? Uh, no, sorry, what was I enjoying watching on Booktube this week? Last week, I didn't have broadband because my telephone pole was knocked down, so I hadn't watched any Booktube, really. Um, the telephone pole is still in the same situation. But unfortunately, 4G that was supplied by my employer works better than my original broadband which shows how shocking it was. Just shocking um, nowadays, you know. <laughs> but <laughs> let's not get annoyed at that. <laughs> what was I watching? What did I particularly enjoy? Um, I just thought it's a nice way to start uh, rather than just starting straight into the books. And I thought this week, again, these are not necessarily shout outs. These are just things, big, big booktubers, small booktubers that I've been watching, enjoying watching this week. And this week I was particularly struck by two videos that were about people who enjoyed um, reading what they wanted. And whether you enjoyed it or not, you enjoyed watching them get so enthusiastic about the kind of genre fiction that they like. And one was Jenna Campbell, obviously extremely big cha um, channel, who has finished her... That's all our three budgies. The squeaky one is Joey. Joey has um, a respiratory infection, which unfortunately is um, terminal. So um, we let her enjoy herself while she can. Um, yeah, so so um, Jen Campbell was watching, um, sorry, was, was re had finished, completed her Nikki French um, crime series um, and has particularly, you know, enthusiastic video on what she recommends that you should read. And whether you like crime genre or not, um, you would enjoy that video, I think. And the other person is Amy at Zoe Beck is doing a series of videos at the moment on um, try a chapter, but it's from an urban fantasy. And as Amy Zoe Beck reads a lot of urban fantasy um, series, and she's <laughs> she's a lot to get through. <laughs> to see does she want to keep these series some of these series have been on a bookshelf for ages so it's really nice to see her go through her shelves and decide um which ones that she's going to read so there are those are my two particular picks for this week um so what did i read um the plague stones it is coming up to halloween um which is a good reason to read heart the heart genre but the only reason I'm reading it is when I get stressed, I go and fall back straight onto horror books because they tell good stories. They make something e definitely evil, bad, you know, I mean, they give you a proper evil villain and, you know, that may, may not be possible to fight against. And if it's written well, they give you good characters who have to overcome this. And it's just... It's just my relief mechanism um, to um, read them. I don't get scared at horror genre. Well, sometimes with literary fiction, but because that can be based on reality, but not with the horror genre. So um, this is The Plague Sounds by um, James Brogdon. Um, it's my first brain James Brogdon that I've read. I actually have four in the shelves. Um, and I came... I read part partly in hardback, partly on Audible because it's now free in Audible Plus subscriptions um, in Ireland. Okay, I know it's different all around the world. We only recently got this Audible Plus thing, by the way, about two weeks ago. <laughs> so, 
we're all very enthusiastic, including the buddies, because they get to listen to it too. <laughs> um, they got to listen to some of this one as it happened because um, Joey was having a particularly bad night one night, so I slept in the sitting room with them. So <laughs> I used it to go to sleep. So she knows it very well, so she does have an opinion, as do the other two. Um, this one is set in a village, and we have plague stones. So plague stones were put around this village. And a trusty ship is set up to protect this village from ghosts and a family moves into the a house they don't know anything about this yet um but they um, all of this is sort of explained in the beginning um but but they have gotten this house for free they've had particular problems with where they've lived um and they've gotten this house for free as they didn't inherit it, but it's part of a trusteeship and they must respect the religious ceremonies that go along with this stone that they have in their house and that they, they understand there's the religious ceremonies that go and they're all Christian that go around the village um, at these so these um at these stones. Um, so we have them obviously in a house that's particularly vulnerable. Um, we have the the young protagonist. I think he's about twelve. Ish, if I remember right, he might be thirteen, fourteen. He's um old enough to go to comprehensive or grammar school, so he's at that age, and um in the UK, <laughs> and the mother and the father. The mother is the one who's inherited the house, so he's in particular um particular trouble. So we have the whole haunted ghost house, haunted village, the ghosts are trying to break in story. Um, most of it was predictable and fun. There was a twist at the end. The twist at the end was good, but I didn't see any indications of it coming up in the book. I think when you have a little twist, there should have been an indication in the book. Now, maybe I missed it. Maybe I didn't. Um, that would be my only... Um, problem with this i'll wrap up these things probably i am way behind i haven't done any of my august wrap ups but i will wrap up all of these things probably i'll put irish books together i'll put the women in translation books together i'll put horror books together and i'll just start doing filming wrap ups um with all that's been going on um it's been a bit difficult recently um so another book that I finished last night with Emily at uh, Novel Novels. Um, we were buddy reading Exciting Times. And thank you, Emily, for this buddy read. Because it would have been, I think I would have put it down after the first, our first couple of days. If I wasn't buddy reading it with somebody, I would have put it down. I probably never picked it up again. I wouldn't intentionally have stopped reading it. I would have put just put it down and just never got back to it because it's, more exciting things on my TBR. I have about 14 books I'm reading at the moment, so it's more exciting things than exciting times. <laughs> um, <laughs> this book is very much millennial fiction. Um, it is a extremely well-crafted um, love triangle, basically. Um, our main protagonist, Ava, lives in Hong Kong, where she moved, using her bush and money. Um, so abortion money in Ireland is just money that, because in Ireland until recently, there was no abortions here, you had to go to the UK. So a lot of young women saved up enough money so they would have the money for the clinic and the, the flights over. Um, I always, I, yeah, I think that's very macabre myself, but um, we just used contraceptives, whether they're illegal or not, when I was young, but you know, that's, is a phenomenon. I know it's true. Um, I know a few women who have done it. But she uses this money to move abroad and start teaching English as a foreign language. She meets this rich English guy, Julian, um, basically moves in with him and then um, starts off a relationship with a woman called Edith. I hope that's not too much spoil. It's kind of obvious from the back that Edith is a relationship, not just a friendship. Um, and it's the triangle between all of this. It's a big, huge exploration of how the English language is used because she's an Irish English speaker um, and she's teaching British English to the Hong Kong residents, the, the young children between eight and 12, I think. 
and <laughs> sorry about the noise <laughs> they didn't even get to read this book because it was all read in physical copy they're very excited by the premise um <laughs> and it's about the language the language differences it's about the class difference a little bit too between julian and Ava, um, there is an exploration of Edith. I know some people say that this is not a great portrayal of people of Hong Kong and people live in Hong Kong. I can't say that. I don't know. I do know the portrayal of somebody who went to Eton and Oxford, which Judith is, is, is Julian is, is 100% correct. Um, having worked with people from Eton, Oxford backgrounds. Um, <laughs> it just rang true. Um, but it's an exploration of all this and, and her inability to say things and what is this big secret that happened in Ireland, which isn't that huge. Um, and a very introspective 20 something year old um, book. Um, I think, I think Emily, I am going to leave this at four stars. It was probably about three, just for good writing at the end, at the beginning. And then it just got better, um, um, as you, as you went forward. Um, I'm not, don't think I'd be keeping this just because this, for literary fiction, you're very much in somebody's head and these are problems I've outgrown. Um, I don't understand how I, I feel like I've outgrown 20 something millennial issues while still having, um, you know, like, you know, being a, quite happy with a very young protagonist and the coming of age story, but you know, it is what it is. Um, extremely well written. And I, if you, if someone still hasn't read it, it's definitely worth picking up and having a go, um, and see what you think, I suppose. Um, so what am I reading at the moment? So at the moment, you can't fly, baby. Yeah, you can't breathe if you fly. I have gotten, I've, I've, not, I've not actually marked it. I did mark it. I keep losing my bookmarks at the moment. Um, I'm about halfway through the James Joyce's The Dubliners. Um, because myself and Alan are big, hard books in classes. We're going to start buddy reading Dubliners 100. So... Um, James Joyce's edition was 100 years old, about five or six years ago. So they um, reprinted it with all these, like John Boyne would be one of the more famous authors, um, Emma McBride, Patrick McCabe, um, all wrote what they call, that's why I left the guitars here for once, a, a, a cover version of James Joyce's original stories. So this is my first time reading James Joyce. Um, halfway through, I'm absolutely adoring the stories and the different characters that he's bringing to a very restricted Dublin. I have done some footage to potentially do a full vlog of both of these books. So but how many halfway through? So I did some footage based on a walk that happens in one of the stories. Um, and I hopefully will have a proper wrap up of the two, but um, I think myself and Alan are starting on this one, two stories a day tomorrow, I think it is, <laughs> so hopefully. Okay, so um, again, not quite horror, but this one is actually described as, this is The Evil Within S.M. Hardy, which is a pseudonym, and I've forgotten her um, actual name. She writes urban fantasy. But this one is her gripping supernatural mystery um, series. Yeah, I've picked this one up based on comments on an old video of mine from a year or two, two years ago. Because <laughs> I was actually in London and you could travel. So it's definitely 2019, so it's probably two years exactly. Um, where I was talking about Dan Simmons' Summer of the Night. And I started recently um, talking to a commenter on that video. And they very kindly recommended that I try The Evil Within by S.M. Hardy because they'd just read it and they're now on their second, her second novel. Um, so this is a supernatural um, mystery. So it's kind of, 
it's a murder mystery. There's a girl who has died in a house that he has moved into. Um, but he can see ghosts, including hers. Um, and this is part of obviously how he is going to solve this. Um, so not horror, but um, as the name might suggest, I suppose. Um, but you know, it is a haunted house. The girl is dead. So it is, yeah, it is tricky. Um, but it's so far it's been really enjoyable and I've, um, I can't wait to see the end of it. I actually have a second book. Um, I think it's been delivered to the office at the moment. So, um, we'll be getting that one soon. The other one was Shaketober and I was very naughty and I only got about, um, two acts done of The Tempest. But I would love, just like to say I have a gorgeous copy of The Tempest. So Shaketober is when we're re um, reading. Um, so this week was supposed to be The Tempest. Um, Shakespeare, obviously. Um, so I'll link the relevant links down below. Um, the Tempest um, is a book, is, is, a, is a play I've meant to get you for a long time. Um, I love Stratford upon Avon. It's impossible to get to during pandemics um, because of travel restrictions. And if I was traveling over to the UK, it would be to see friends. I wouldn't be just on a, a, on a jaunt at the moment, um, though it is possible now to travel. Um, but I love Stratford and Avon and Shakespeare. So I am listening to it while reading it so it's just restricted when i can listen to it because i need to listen to it and have the copy of the book here at the same time because i just i wanted to do two at the same time um but i just want to say like these illustrations are beautiful um so yeah i'll have to catch up on that one because um i also want to see well, actually either to watch a uh then an adaptation of it even if it's just a amateur one on youtube or something um, as well, just to kind of sort of get the start with the Navin experience. And the last thing we'll talk about, because I, I didn't grab all the books, so there's too many. <laughs> the Haunting Arm of Fielding, I still have to read <laughs> since last week. I haven't actually moved. So um, this is more as a history of the investigation. So Alma Fielding was a housewife in 1930s London. So it's if you remember in the background of this, we had the build up to the Second World War and it's more of a history of his the investigator, which is Nando Fodor. So Nando Fodor um, is a Hungarian Jew, I think. <laughs> I should remember so this is I have to um, read this. Um, and it's the build up to the Second World War is happening in the background. So it's very much about his history of these investigations, um, whether you, you believe in these things or not, um, doesn't, it's not really important to the actual, this book itself. It's, it's the, the mythology and, and the feeling of, um, him investigating and, um, yeah, he believes so that's what that's what matters i suppose um it's it's a, it's interesting piece in history um these um these investigations as well um so <laughs> i'm talking about something i haven't read this week which is silly so maybe i should wrap up um i hope whatever you're watching that you're enjoying it um i will be watching hopefully your booktube videos i said this two weeks ago and then i had no internet so i'm afraid to say it <laughs> i'm hoping to watch your youtube videos and watch your um pretty <laughs> reads but meanwhile i hope you all have lovely weekends and until next time bye now